So we're gonna start off today here with our two inch brush. I've already got some clear gel and white over the, uh, over the sky area. I don't like to put it in my landscape because it makes it muddy. It makes it just absolutely muddy when you go to do your highlights. So don't do that. We're gonna create a bit of a stormy sky. And I'll vary my colors slightly. I'm not gonna make a big deal about the sky. I think just, a, just a gentle, generic, stormy sky. And this is just the background, but as I put this background in, I'm kind of using my, oh, I like rounded strokes just to give me a, a little bit of a difference in my a little bit of a difference in my in my shapes and in my sky rather than just going in with X's and it all become just flat, which is normally what you do for a sky. That's fine. But today, no, I want it with a little more variation. So I'm rolling, mushing my brush like this. We'll blend it, don't worry. There you go. Leave some openings where we can kind of allow some of that sun to come through. Sometimes it's not about what you paint, it's about what you don't paint. So now I've got a clean brush and we're gonna work it just blending this into the medium. Medium stops right about there. I'm gonna work it just blending this in, making it a bit softer than it is, maybe continue with some of my circles. This is just a backdrop. I'm gonna place on some clouds, some actual clouds on top of this. You could, and some people do, and it's fine too. <laughs> leave the, uh, you know, leave just the kind of basic shapes here as the clouds. You can certainly do that, and I've done that in the past, but today I'm going to pull a little more detail in my clouds. So that's how that's going to work. Probably get the filbert brush out for it. You could use several different brushes that really make a whole lot of difference. Whatever you use, just try to get those little shapes in there and not, you know, not overdo it. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. Now on this side, uh, it would be just the opposite because we're gonna cover it with our barn, with our trees and whatnot. You don't wanna add anything over here, there's just no need. In fact, we'll probably have to wipe it off with a shop towel, so there you go. Now I'm just working a little white in. I'm working that white in pretty, pretty randomly, really. So just close your eyes, throw it in. There we go. You know what, we should take a look at the, the paintings that you guys did of my painting last week. It's always fun to see. You guys do so, so good. So if you would like to, you can share your version of this painting, this barn painting, and share using the hashtag on the screen. I think there's a special Facebook page where you can post it to that Facebook page, and we'll grab it and then put it in the next video. Oh, that works. Just look at that. See, with only a few strokes, you can really change the way this looks, and you're absolutely um, welcome to, and it's going to be just fine if you want to go ahead and put in some, if you want to go ahead and put in some more of this dark, if you feel like you need the dark, and go ahead and do that as well. Now there's a tree here, so well, yeah, I can always, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I want. I'll wipe it off with a shop towel. If I don't want it there, you know, I'll wipe it right off, so that'll be fine. Well, now I'm going to paint in our farthest away area first. Just get a little color. We don't need much. Just see a, a stroke or two of color there, you see. Yep, that works. It's just a little light yellow on the filbert brush. Um, tell you what, let me get my two inch brush. This is a little, there we go, a little harsh and so I'm gonna soften that. Oh, that's all we need. Okay, now our, our little path, we're gonna need to kind of figure that out. We know that that path is gonna come around like that. And let's see here, it kind of comes around. You know, my sketch isn't perfect. It's there we go. It's kind of just a rough sketch, but I'm just getting my lighter colors in. And of course, you know how we do it. We'll kind of we'll worry about everything else as it falls together. There's a little bit of yellow and some mud, yellow, white, and mud. We'll place this in. Not worried at all about my shadows, just about kind of my shapes and my lighter colors. because The shadows will go in real easy. It's one of those paintings where you really have to watch out. You need everything to line up or it's just not going to work. Make that a little smaller. Okay, and then a little bit here. So we'll just keep playing around with this. Try to get a lot of this filled in. Leave some spaces for shadows. I guess that'd be okay. You don't have to, but you can. There, there we go. There's some light color. That looks pretty good. Nice bright yellow. Yeah, I see this is going to be exciting. It's going to be intense. Quite a lot of light. There's going to be some, go ahead and establish some grass here in the road. Let's just get a lot of grass in here. Well, now I'm going to actually, it's way too much paint. 
I'm gonna take some of that off, but I was gonna say now we're gonna just tap in our little extra trees here. This is a background tree. I'm gonna try not to cover up most of it, but my plan is to kind of have one right here, so it's gonna cover up most of it. So let me grab just a, a three quarter brush. Let's get us a little trunk in there. Don't need anything too fancy. Just kind of a little split maybe there and then, okay, good, and then it goes right behind that barn. Yeah, that sort of works, perfect. Stuff is so hidden, you know, there's a lot of layers in this painting. Very much a lot of this is hidden and that's okay. So let's just do that. And get a little more of the bush tree kind of action in there. Okay, that works. It definitely works. It's kind of decent. We'll leave it for now. Now, I would love to see as well while we're going here, just put, putting in dark color. I'd like to see some black and green here for some evergreen trees. And I'll just pull these straight up, kind of give them a little flick like that. See, you can spend, uh, you know, three years on evergreen trees or three minutes. It just depends on how fast you, you want to go, and what kind of a result you want. You can paint with a liner brush in every single little limb if that makes your painting work for you. But for me, I'm just going to paint in uh, just a smudge, honestly, just a smudge or two. So now I'm going to create some more trees with the filbert brush and this time we'll make them bigger, a little more pronounced. We're coming more toward the foreground. Actually, this one's probably going to end uh, just up on this little ridge. This is a ridge and kind of hard to tell here, but this is right here, a ridge. This is all messy. Now, I know you're probably worried at this point, but I'm going to, I'm going to make it a lot less messy. I'm going to spend some time just in the background here very soon, but I want to get the canvas covered first. That is my, my kind of my thought, the way I'd like to do the order of it. You can do it whatever order you want. It's one thing about painting, it really doesn't require a set order. Oh yeah, look at the difference. Yeah, that, that's starting to look pretty good. Pretty good. Go ahead and get some more of this in. Yeah. There we go. All right, we'll keep working on that. You could really do as much as you want, but I don't want to fill in my background too much. Hey, watch this. Let's go out. It's a little thick. Let's make that more leaves. Well, let's go out and then back in. Oh, that's kind of cool. Just for something different. I always do straight trees. Well, there's a there's a not so straight tree just for something different. I'm bringing in another tree that sits just a little further away. Not a lot, but that lighter color will push it back. Well, now I'm going to paint in some of my darkest areas, some of my shadow areas of grass. Now I know this doesn't look anything like grass, but have you seen the uh, the technique where we fluff it with a fan brush? I think that's what I'm going to do. It works out pretty, pretty well, but I'm just placing in my shadows here and I won't even bother making it look good. I'm just literally going to use this as a second palette. It's going to look very weird, very abstract, and that is OK with me. It's going to be it's going to be OK. <laughs> uh, so let's see, we'll just work in uh, a little more shadow there. Yeah, it's going to be so pretty. Little splashes of of dark in here, it'll make it look like little shadow spots coming through. You would expect to see some some shadow spots, kind of hard to say. From these trees, you know, filtering that light, the lights coming across from the right, moving to the left. Let's get a little over here. Let's get a little shadow under the under the barn as well. Or behind the barn, I should say. So now let's mix up a color, just kind of a, of a rough gray. Looks like I need some more paint actually, but this is going to be for the barn, the actual underpainting of the barn. That works kind of gray. So I just made a purple and then put a little, put a little brown in it. Each time you reload, I think, at least that each time I reload, I'm going to grab some more, I'm going to grab some more color, just any kind of different color. Just to, to have some variety. That actually, that's not quite right. We got to go this way with that. About like, about like that. <laughs> okay, it's going to be an old, rugged, run-down barn anyway. Some black, which I need some more of, right up in the actual window itself, and then maybe down there. Nice big crack. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and create this path in here. It's really the last thing that we have to do to, to kind of finish up, at least filling in the basic 
basic painting area. I did, just so you know, I did take a blue shop towel, just like this, and wiped off this barn area just a few minutes ago, right before I started this path. That's very important because that helps to dry it out, really makes it completely dry almost. And that way we can, you know, add our details on top. We can even wipe it again if we need to. So you can put more dark on and then wipe it again and put more dark, and it'll just build up that paint, but it'll build it up that stain, really. Not so much the paint, but building up the stain on the canvas. And it's that stain that makes it possible to, to highlight in detail even while you're painting it all in one sitting. And that is the secret. It's not a big secret, but once you figure it out, you know, it really makes a difference. Now back here, let me grab a little more yellow ochre to add to my color. Just slide in this path. This is not nothing close to finished, is it? This doesn't look anything near finished, but that's okay. I'm just getting basic colors blocked in right now. That's all I'm thinking about, basic colors. A little more right there to finish up. Well, now I've got a paper towel and a very, well, relatively clean fan brush. Good enough. But you won't need your palette for this step because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little better texture in the grass. You could do this at the end if you wanted to. Get your barn done and then pull your grass over it. Or you can do your grass, pull your barn in front, and then pull your grass back. It doesn't really matter. But uh, what does matter is that we fluff the grass in such a way to really make some decent texture. You don't want to, this is the reason your palette's not here, you don't want to add too many different things. You know, I just smoosh on some color and I leave it. And I use this canvas as a palette. In fact, I don't really need to do all that much. It is very important to keep your brush clean, I'm wiping it after every couple strokes. You can go down or up. I do find that just going up with the fan brush really makes a difference. And then toward the toward the bottom, you can go like, you know, whole different, a whole bunch of different ways you can do this. I don't know if there's really a wrong way, but this way works. Now let's begin shading this barn a little. See that? There we go. It's not gonna take a whole lot. And like I was saying before, the, I think I mentioned it, which was, we may need to wipe this off again. I've already wiped it off once. We may need to wipe it off again. That's just the way it goes. Wow, what a difference. Just a couple of hits of highlight or shadow make. What a difference. So now I'm gonna take some white. This is the quarter inch brush. I love this little thing. It's tiny. It gets in to all of these smaller areas, creates some nice details. You could use a detail round, but this one's already shaped like a board. <laughs> That's convenient. All right, let's go ahead and begin working on the boards. Imagine that. Now, if you don't have one of these, these are relatively new, these quarter inch flats. Definitely head to the website and pick one up because I think you'll find it very useful. Some good variation in there. Then we'll need to go back over it again one more time with shading. So it's just, it's not a one step process, is it? It actually takes a lot of different layers to make a barn look good. Now the rugged barns, I think they take more layers probably than a nicer clean barn, but the result is really neat, really cool. So it's worth it. We are going to have shading from the trees kind of on this. In fact, I think I'm going to do a tree right in front. I may take this tree and pull. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Well, now we're going to work on the background. We need to work on the background because there's not a lot of detail back here, but a little color will help and a little brightness. Now, the last thing we want to do is sharpen it up to where it's too much, you know. That path kind of slips around good. Yes, that looks good. That looks good. You know, this is just a basic underpainting here. It's finally time to go ahead and get something else going. I've got the quarter inch flat, flat brush and you don't want to, you don't want to put too much sharpness in the background. That'll, that's the one thing that'll kind of mess it up. The other thing you don't want to do in the background is put too many vivid colors. Keep our colors nice and soft and kind of pastel in the background and then more vivid in the foreground. I'm going to continue forward here using the, the same flat brush, the quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to highlight the best I can. 
We may need to stop and wipe this area off. You can just take a shop towel and wipe off the path if you need to. Uh, I think I'm okay. It seems to be working, but if it stops working, I'll, I'll do that. There we go. A little bit yellow grass is not going to hurt anything. This is good. I'm just kind of following the basic shape of the path. You know, it doesn't need to be completely perfect everywhere, but just the basic shape. And honestly, just a few seconds of this is going to look good. This is one of those paintings that, you know, you rush to get the details or the, uh, the underpainting and then you slow way, way down and get these details in just right because that's what's going to make the painting good. This painting relies on these details. So there, make sure they go in, they go in nicely. There's a little more. See that? The light's coming across, so we don't get, normally you get that shadow on the path. We're not getting so much of that over here because of the way the path is angling and the way the light's coming in. So that's kind of interesting, a little different. I like that. We'll just work at kind of creating these details. Down at the bottom, you make bigger details. At the back, you make smaller details. It seems easy, but <laughs> sometimes we miss it, so just make a note of that. Now right here, we're going to place in just a few extra lines. You can see I'm going to put a little more highlight on, not a lot. But here's where it gets exciting. This is the detail round brush. You could even do this with the liner brush. If you're finding that this doesn't stick, don't wipe off your detail. Use a liner brush. It'll stick that way. It's, a, it's an interesting way to do it, but it definitely would work. I'm liking this old roof. I think this really works. Maybe get some rust spots out on it. Um, looks like there's a little gap here, maybe. I don't know. It's cool. And you know what's great about these old barns? You don't have to be too precise with it. You can just get in there and do a little bit. A little bit of detail, cracks and whatnot. It really makes it look good. And you don't have to be square because you can always, um, you know, don't have to be square or perfect because it's falling down. You can always use that as your excuse. There. Excellent. Maybe a crack right there. Now I'm bringing this tree right in front of this barn. I love that. I love, love that. We're going to lay it on fairly thick though, because there's a lot of layers in that barn. There you go. Hey, look at that. That works. Sometimes you just lay it on thick and it comes out just fine. Sometimes you need to stop and wipe the canvas. Sometimes you don't. Well, now we can finally work on these trees. Oh, we shouldn't have left them so long. But they sure do look good. Look, I've spent just a minute or two getting in these colors. Now, our lighting, you, you know, it'd be so easy to just come in here and place a highlight everywhere. But I'm not going to do that. I've got one, see this one slash of highlight there? There's nothing down here. Very, very dark. I've got that one slash of highlight. And I'm going to do that one more time up here. And I think it'll be more interesting. You don't have to do it that way. You can do more highlight everywhere. But I think this is going to be interesting. Tell me what you think. I think it's going to be interesting. Oh, man, look at that. And, uh, you know, when I say a, a slash, I don't really mean draw a line through it. I just mean you know, kind of clumps of highlight, two main clumps of highlight. Now I'm going to create some ivy here on this tree, just a light green. And I'm doing kind of these little dots. See that? These little dots, a couple dots connected. So that kind of gives you that leaf shape. Of course, not everyone is going to be just like that, but most of them are. Most of them are. Change the angles of them. See that? Make it, make it work. Make it look like there's some vines climbing up. Well, now we're going to create a lot of liner brush details, a lot of grass, a lot of detail. We'll just do it pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty quickly. We won't, won't have to make it all perfect, not at all. But look, we can do some tree limbs real quick. Yeah, that works. Look at that. If it doesn't flow properly, add a little more oil. Obviously, if you add too much oil, it'll run right off the canvas. There. Oh, I like that. We'll just keep going here. Just keep going. You can do as much of this as you need to. In fact, I think I need quite a bit. That's just me. A little bit maybe on this one. Look at that. Just pop a little just extra color and contrast and just make it look that much more worn out. 
You can rub with the liner, whatever it takes, whatever you want to do. There's not much going on here. Bring a few blades of grass up. Maybe a, looks like I wanted to do a bush there. See that? <laughs> Let's do that bush right there. So anyway, we'll just play around with this. So you can see that the little details, they add up so quickly. Oh, so quickly. There, I love that. I love that. Helping to kind of see all these little things are helping to tell the story of the rundown barn, aren't they? They really are. You know what I think would be really cool? We got our, our little vines over there. What if we did a vine or two kind of growing up the barn? Was not planning to do this at all, but here it is. I think it's a great idea. Helps to kind of incorporate it, make it feel like part of the painting over there. There you go. Nice, a couple of shadows. See, I love painting with a liner brush. It is quickly becoming you know, higher and higher up in my favorite brush list because it does so many things when you learn to control it. There, so definitely take some extra time to practice with a liner brush. Worth it. Well, that's about it for this barn painting. I really enjoy seeing how the barn is kind of integrated into the landscape, you know, with the trees and stuff in front. Pretty interesting. If you enjoyed seeing this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.